Yes. What's up, baby? What's up? How you feeling? Man, as soon as I get down in this chair, I'll be all right. Took a while to get down. Hell yeah, they keep moving the floor on me. How tall? How much you weigh? Ah, uh, six four and a quarter. Two. What the quarter for? Man, because I ain't six five. I ain't six four. Let's <laughs> <laughs> tell him a quarter. I gotta say the quarter. That's sports. I'm That's five four. Fun. I tell him I'm six feet tall. You ain't five four. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dang! Let's start. Let's stand up again. No, I'm I'm five nine. Okay. I'm 5'8". You average as hell. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm 5... I think I'm 5'7". You think you're 5'? No, no. I, I'm, I was 5'8 when, uh, when I was a teenager. And that's when I stopped measuring. Damn. So I could be 5'9 now, right? A little man child, then. Come on. Now you're disrespecting me. Uh, dog, 5'8"? I wasn't 5'8 to like 10th grade or something. Really? You were taller than me when I was like a freshman. I'm so sure. what happened? You got the surgery? <laughs> <laughs> Anti-Ozempic. Like, I went the other way. Uh... Man, my mama was huge. And oh, how just, tall is she? She was six one, mm. uh, and she was over two hundred. She got to about two fifty, I would say. I never saw the scale, but I guessed it out. Mm. And I was just a late bloomer. I had to catch up to mom. So, Cash was like, "Dog, I don't know why you playing sports and your mama bigger than you. You need to do something." So, I oh wow, her. dang, yeah. Buffalo Bills. Yeah, that's why I got drafted. Yeah. How was it in the NFL? <sighs> um, you got a lot of girls, didn't you? My, <laughs> Come on, let's get right into okay. it. Okay. Uh, when did talk, you get married? Uh, ten years ago. So I could talk it. Okay, good. She good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was with my wife then. All so right, cool. She cool. already know all yeah. the stories. Yeah, I mean, look. The funniest thing is when you get drafted, you immediately hit a U-turn. You go back yeah. to high school. Who dissed me? <laughs> and you ain't got to turn far because they at your draft party because they like, oh my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was a bunch of that. Like, wait, so fake friends just came out the woodworks. Everybody changes, yeah. Fake friends, uh, real friends. Make sure you know how real they are. Fake friends, try to be real. Uh, girls who dissed you want to be on the list now. And they know it's a list because you made it this far. Everybody dissing you, now everybody in line. So it was kind of wild to just see the dynamics change. And meanwhile, you're trying to be the same dude. Like, mm -hmm. I'm still going to Fox Hills Mall. Like, I got to go buy something. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. And everybody just looking at you different, even though you ain't got a dollar from the team yet. Yeah. You haven't even been to the organization yet. Nothing. They just called you, say, hey, we drafting you. We'll see you soon. You famous and broke. <laughs> like right? a rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, like, rappers are famous and broke? A lot of them. Really? <laughs> don't act like you don't know. Go ahead, tell me. Tell me some names. I ain't going to... Uh, na names now? Who broke that act? Who famous that broke? We know the ones that... The ones... I, you know what? It's funny because... You can't say they broke because then they ain't got really fame. The old model used to be like mixtape, mm. backpack rapper, then like, oh, I got a label deal. And then a lot of the cats who were independent just didn't have no money. But then it started to pop. Mm -hmm. Too Short, Master P, mm -hmm. like cats out the trunk was making money. But right, right, between right. them, it's about 100 names that probably didn't make it. Damn. Like, I don't think rapping Forte had a lot of money. And I love <laughs> rapping Forte. Yeah. I just don't think he had a lot of money from rap. Yeah. You know I mean? And then, you know, you got those one hit wonders. Yeah. But MC Hammer, he's still making money, right? Oh, yeah. He always gonna make money. Yeah. He just had so much on that payroll that it was like, I don't care how much you bring it in, it's how much is going out. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to him. I actually know Hammer pretty well. Really? Uh, yeah. He, dog, I have a moment. I went to a Hammer concert as a fan. Yeah. How so long I, ago? Is he still touring? Yeah. Damn. This was maybe three, four years ago. Mm. I'm the type of homie that, like, if you're performing, I ain't trying to hit you because I don't want to get in that line of the right. next guy that you got to get the passes for, all yeah, that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I got I got my way in. Yeah. So I go to the concert, normal seats, me and my sister, we big fans, huge fans. Mm. And literally, he going around, he turning this mother out all of it down the rows, and he sees me. Yeah. And literally comes up to me, middle of the song, and said, what's up, Barcellus? Like, I'm part of the lyrics, right? Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, I ain't got that moment on camera like that. But it yeah. happened. Oh, you know wow, I mean? that's beautiful. So that's stuff that I like, you know, when it goes full circle. You grow up in a living room, watching this dude, you hitting it like this. Yeah. And one day, that's the homie, and the next day, he performing with you. That's performing crazy. For you. Yeah. What's, your, what's your favorite type of music? What you listen to? Rap. Rap? Rap. Not this rap. What, that rap. What, <laughs> what's the difference between this rap and that rap? Not a ton. Right. Um, lyrical content is different. Like, it's all about the mainstream. Right. So uh, I was into rap. The first time I got into rap, not talking about hip hop, hippity hop. Yeah. I'm talking about like really was like Run DMC. Okay. 
Uh, then Eric B. and Rock Kim, Public Enemy. So they all, the mainstream at that time was like rebellion or like, yeah. yo, y'all don't hear us. We out here fresh too. And then NWA came, hijacked it and said, yeah, we out here and yeah. it's bad out here. And I'm going to play devil's advocate okay. because I think that rap, yeah, rap, it's, it's, it's different, right? But I feel like back then it was, this is the message. Now some of the some of the some of the artists mm -hmm. now some of the artists now it's like they have a they have a message but they're doing it artistically oh. instead of just boom, give me boom, the artistic boom. way through canvas <laughs> no like like, like auto tune what? like the melodies you know what I mean the I ain't mix, mad at auto mixing mixing the melodies with the rap you know what I mean I I know like, what you're you don't saying. you don't think that's art it, Drake Drake some of his songs with the with the music and the rap some of it that's art like, oh no no that's great but yeah. the mainstream message Drake is either talking to a girl that hurt him or he yeah. hurt her or the mainstream has shifted from that to like yo I done slanged the keys right. I done made the money but I'm still rapping because it's I don't know why, yeah. but I already made so much money. Right. And the mainstream effect is different. Like the mainstream effect before was positive messaging, mm -hmm. which shifted into like rebel messaging, which shifted into gangster. Right. Which now is just ratchet, gangster, and a lot more pain. But we realize that the reason they're doing that is because they're trying to keep us in the system. So like they're promoting that to make it think like, oh, it's cool to to uh, to kill people and it's cool to, oh, to yeah. do drugs so they can oh, yeah. take our people and lock them away. Oh yeah. Um, because you have artists like Childish Gambino who are trying to do a positive message. And yeah, sometimes his songs do pop off, but not all the time. Yeah, you know they mean? don't get the machine behind them. Yeah. It's never been like that though. Yeah. That's, that's from Hello. I would say once it became mainstream, they realized like everything, like lower frequencies get higher ratings. Just simple, you know? Mm -hmm. You hear a car screeching and brakes plot, you looking, you see somebody on the corner fighting, you stopping. Mm -hmm. Like that's just the way we're rigged and then we gotta get conditioned out of that because positivity, love, kindness, people be like, all right, I know it, it matters, it's essential, but. Yeah. Fuck all that. Yeah, where the violence at? Where they fighting at? Where they right. throwing them hands? Yeah, yeah. And then that's that's the rigging. So And what do you how do you feel about it? Are you are you the one that would stop to see a fight and stop to to see an accident? Yeah. Yeah. So what what do we do? Um I, I live vicariously through like ignorance. But uh -huh. I I'm not ignorant. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not trying right. I'm not perfect either, but I'm not trying to do what I see a lot of people see. Cause people blame the music. I don't blame the music. I like I heard all the NWA songs. I ain't shot nobody. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So when I hear people blame the music or blame the machine, I'm like, no, nah, that's just another influence that has power, mm -hmm. but you have power over it. Mm -hmm. You have an inner voice that's louder than any voice out here if you amplify it. Mm -hmm. You know, whether that's faith, religion, God, belief in self. And if you let those outside voices drown out your inner voice, then you're going to be tempted to do those things and do it. Right. Yeah. No, that's very true. Um, because... There are, there are a lot of people who think like you, but then there's a lot of the younger people who, like, maybe they're aspiring to be like these rappers, and that's why they're trying to do all these crimes and stuff, because it's like, oh, if I need to be this rapper, I need to live what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, they're getting cold. You right. know, it, it gets sent down to them, like, this is the prototype. Mm -hmm. It's in every business. Like, in being an athlete, it was a version. Being a broadcaster, hello and welcome mm -hmm. to SoFi Stadium. Like, there's always a typecast, and you think the safest way in or the easiest way in is just being that that spot, being that yeah. typecast. But at the same time, you realize that the thing that pays the bills is your uniqueness, right. like who you are. Yeah. And it's always been positive rap. It's yeah. just now it's heavily slanted and skewed towards the negative rap getting the mm -hmm. promotion. And you're from Compton, right? Yeah. So you really against all odds, not killing nobody. <laughs> 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 Come on. Oh, man. It's wild to, to, to be from Compton versus being in Compton. Like, what you mean? Like, when you're from there, everybody, like, hears all of the, the gangs, the drugs, the poverty, and everyone sees it like, man, like war zone kind of, right. you know? But when you're really there, it's more like Friday, you know? Like <laughs> how Friday tried to show the hood in a positive way. Yeah. Even though they had problems, it was still like, no, we have fun too. Yeah. So being from there, it was gangster, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like- Gangster. Root. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was gangster, but it wasn't gangster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not hard ER. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. hard ER, but perseverance, like, 
I was there for my first six years. Then we moved to Greener Pastures, which is nothing but South Central. Mm -hmm. And we were there every weekend because my grandmother still stayed there today she died. And it's just a lot of adversity, man. Mm -hmm. It's like there's 100 meters you can run. There's 110-meter hurdles you can run. Right. Just You can still get down there. It's just going to take a little technique, understanding of what's in front of you and those obstacles. Hey, do you regret anything in life? Hell yeah. You do? Right. Why is that? Um, because I wish it was different, mm. you know. Um, you don't feel like the mistakes you made in the past make the man who you are today? No. Really? No. God damn, I got to erase everything. I <laughs> everything I believe is a lie. Well, because regret is not just limited to mistakes. Sometimes things are thrown in your way, thrown at you uh, that wasn't your mistake, and S you regret that moment. STDs, I get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Got a couple scratches uh, down there. Look at, look at, look. I'm a 90s kid <laughs> in college. It was a problem. Uh, yeah. Let me say, like, okay, I regret getting hurt in the NFL. I regret coming back so fast when mm -hmm. I was hurt in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't necessarily about, okay, I learned something from it. I learned, only thing I learned was you was a fool. You had leverage, you had power. You should have Kawhi Leonard it. But let me tell you this. Mm. Maybe someone's listening to this podcast that just got hurt. And now they're going to listen to this message and take the time. So that mistake you made yeah. is going to help somebody else out. Yeah, I'm glad it's helping them more than me. But <laughs> damn, I like to be first in that line. Sound bitter to me, <laughs> don't he? He sound bitter, don't he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we see the model now. Like, cats yeah. are smart. They told us then, don't put bad film out there. Like, never be on the field if you're not feeling it. Mm. But there's pressure. There's obviously you and your ambition. You made it. You want to show it. You want to display it. And then... You get sucked up into it instead yeah. of being out there full throttle like you should yeah. be. Yeah. I mean, how do you how do you deal with pressure on and off the field? Ah, pressure. Um, deep belief system that no matter what's created, there's a solution for it. Mm -hmm. No matter what comes my way, I can overcome it. Um, I don't believe that anything that is created is greater than what I can do in terms of creating an opportunity to survive that and then thrive from that. Right. Um, just a belief system, like problems come, problems go. Everything yeah. is it, everything is episodic. And I think that sometimes you get lost in those episodes and think it's a longer than, it's longer than the chapter, it's longer than the volume, it's a yeah. whole book. And it's not, it's just whatever you're reading right now, that will change if you persevere through it. Mm. And how, how are your beliefs, are you, uh... Are you spiritual? Are you religious? How do you how do you get down? How do you go through your days and years? Yeah, when I was young, I was in the church. Grandmother, you know, she would bribe us. She's like, you're going to church, and then we go get something to eat, baby. And get something to eat was just going to the grocery store and picking the grapes. <laughs> and eating them in the aisle before we paid for them. Wait, so y'all would go to church and yeah. then go commit a sin? <laughs> she said it ain't stealing if you pay for it. But I was like, Grandma, we ain't paid yet. <laughs> <laughs> and don't the grapes, don't you got to weigh those? Yeah, yeah. That's why I said grapes. Grandma ain't stupid. No. Oh, <laughs> grandma, she got it going on. <laughs> so, yeah, I was big in the church, uh, read the Bible, uh, even religious all the way to, like, college, like, defined religious, like, going to church and um, checking all those boxes. Then after that, it's been more of, I wouldn't even say spiritual journey. I'm just, I'm in conversation constantly with God. And that's just how I live life. And I know the the biblical tenets. I know what we should do, what we shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. And I just try to let that conversation guide me and, and just ride from there. you don't go to church anymore? No. What, why is that? <laughs> Many reasons. Um, Come on, talk to us now. One, I just saw the, I saw my own frailties and then I used to look up to the pastors. Mm -hmm. And then I realized they have their own, and whether they're masking it, whether they're covering it up, or whether they are at a different level of maturity but still imperfect, I didn't want to seek them anymore. I wanted to seek higher. Yeah. I um, actually had a conversation uh, with Bieber, actually, mm -hmm. about um, I went back down to, uh, to Florida, and uh, I went to church, and I haven't, I haven't been back in years, and I was kind of... I was kind of like confused because I saw the business behind the church. Yeah, you know what I mean. Part. I saw the business. I saw like I saw everything. Yeah, it's, it's, I believe and 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 all of that. But then I saw the business, and I actually talked to Bieber because he's one of the only people I knew that was like really religious and really outspoken about that. And I asked him. I was like, "Yo, what do I do 
now that I can see. Now I'm older. I'm mm-hmm. older and I can see like what it's right. really about. Right. It's like that's because you're putting your faith in man when you need to put your faith in put your faith in God and Jesus. So yeah. I was like, so now it's like, but I still want my when I have kids, I still want my kids to go to church and have that discipline to do it. But yeah, it's it's just it was just hard for me when I saw the business behind it. But I think that because I've talked to people who are um you know, I've dated girls who are spiritual and not spiritual, yeah. uh, religious, not religious. And the difference is if I when I was younger, you know, my parents said, don't sneak out the house. I'm not, I'm not sneaking out the house. Right. My friend who uh, she wasn't spiritual, she would sneak out the house. Mm. And the reason she would sneak out the house, she just wouldn't tell anybody because to her, there's no. There's no like lying is okay because yeah. it's not a it's not a sin. But for me, it's like, oh no, it's not just my parents that are watching, it's God that is watching. Right. When I was a kid, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. that's because I was raised like that. Someone else that's not raised like that, um, she was doing that. And not to say that everybody that's not spiritual or religious is gonna act that way, but that's when I um I realized, oh, it's very important to uh teach my kids uh religion right. um or or you know spirituality whatever it is any any religion but it's 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 something to say that when you believe in something that's of uh higher value higher power so, yeah. yeah i mean we're all trying to get to that place it's just we're all going to take different roads mm-hmm. there and i think when i was young i took that strict road that journey i must be in church or i'm not as faithful i'm not as believing as i should be i must read my bible etc all those things to inform me but as you get of age, you realize that everywhere you are, you can have faith. And I didn't want to put my faith in people anymore. Mm-hmm. I wanted to put my faith in myself as I'm made in God's image. Mm-hmm. So uh, a lot of the things that I was seeing, like you know, indiscretions from pastors, indiscretions from the church, the entity, like you said, the business, knowing the whole ecosystem from the inside out. And then knowing a lot of the people that I used to run with now in, in the church, and I'm like, good, you turned over a new leaf, but at the same time, I still know you. Right. And I'm like, I like Bieber said, I stopped wanting to be lateral in my faith in man and have my faith in God. Mm-hmm. And my God is in me, so then faith without action is death. So I'm going to act about what I believe. Mm-hmm. And what I believe is without walls, without constructs, I'm still made in the image of God. Right. And then my kids, I want them to have those same principles and values. They be, just may not get it from going to church. Yeah. They're getting it from my actions. They're getting it from my teachings, just like I got it from the church's teachings. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that definitely makes sense. So you go, you're go, you not going to homeschool them. You're going to home church them. <laughs> I That's some that. money right there. No, stop. Uh, yeah, <laughs> got to do that, man. Live your life the way you want them to live it. Yes. You know? So we talked about religion. Let's talk about politics. Everything we're not supposed to talk about. I like it. Uh, Trump got shot in the head. No way. In the, the, ear. the ear. In the ear. Yeah, Trump yeah. got shot in the ear. That was crazy. Yeah, that was wild. Um, real or, or or fake? Oh, come on. You can't say fake. I, first of all. I mean, I'm I'm just asking questions. I I know okay. I know people oh, passed away. I know. That's that's a crazy thing. People think it's fake. I'm like, damn. I like I judge people when they say some stuff. And I shouldn't, yeah. but I do. Ye judge, ye shall be judged. I, all right, judge me too. Yeah. Um, I mean. It's like you seen a pregnant woman with a cigarette. You're like, uh. I think people were saying it was fake before they heard that other people passed away. I think people were saying it was fake because it's such a rush to be first and get attention and be in the algorithm and in virality. And I got to just let you know I know something. Yeah. When people forget that sometimes nothing is something. Like, right. Just sit back. Yeah. Get the intel. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just wild that people would think that. And then people were like, look, no one's running. And I'm like... Have you ever been to a rally? I, I've been to concerts. You in shit. Compton. <laughs> you from Compton. Let them know. Let them know. Well, I'm like, y'all ain't never been shot at. Like, that, that, that guy's a strike, right? Yeah, I, I'm yeah. mad that I have to actually say that. And I got multiple strikes. But I've been shot at. Not me, the intended target, but yeah. the bushes around me. Yeah. Our football field while we warming up, et cetera. Yeah. It's not coming to you like in Rambo movies, y'all. It right. ain't coming to you like you see it. And it's so funny that everyone rushes to like the general response. Panic and oh my God, run. And no, sometimes you're like, what was that? Right. Yeah. What? And then you're like, oh, and then you realize I am in an open field. Running does nothing. It does nothing. You just more of a target moving, right? Yeah. So it's wild that people even went there, like Amanda Seals. Oh God. 
What's wrong? Um, people just go there and I'm like, what's wrong with y'all? Like, one, you gotta be evil right. to even think that something evil like that was contrived. Like, right. we're gonna shoot. Oh, those aren't real bullets. Okay. We're gonna waste all the taxpayers' money in Secret Service. We're gonna do all this ploy just so he get more votes. When he already winning in the polls. Let's just right, stop right. playing with that. Yeah. Um, like it's just I didn't understand why people were running with the fake. And then now they're saying uh, the people that after they found out that people passed away, some people are saying, oh, these were people that sacrificed themselves okay. for the greater good. One thing about the human brain, mm -hmm. all it needs is to think and it will find all the information it needs to support it, yeah. rational or not. Right. It will always validate itself, justify itself. And that's why it's selective per perception. It's like this, like cats be like, come to LA, man, I don't like LA. Why y'all like LA? Ain't nothing but celebs and, and like Hollywood and everybody got a Lamborghini, Ferrari, Mercedes. And I was like, hmm? you know how I many Toyotas there are? <laughs> you we, know what I mean? We rode here in a Prius. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> you know how I many normal people there are? Stop, stop talking about La Cienega and Sunset. Yeah. Like LA is so much more, but people lock in on what they think it is and then they find everything in support and evidence. Crazy. Right. Yeah. So that was not fake. That was sad. He was an inch or two away from getting killed right before our very eyes. Mm. And it shouldn't take that to bolton the line of, y'all need to stop playing with this rhetoric. I hate that everybody could just run. It, hate and love. That everyone could run to their phone and broadcast a message to the world right. with platform, and then that can spread as being truth, as yeah. being real. Yeah. That's dangerous. That's yeah. beyond. That's what led us to this point. Yeah. What led us to him getting shot. Him included, President, former President Trump, and others just say anything. And then they act like that those words don't have energy. Yeah. And that energy's coming back. Yeah. And he but Trump took that, he took that, uh, he took that momentum. He took it, didn't he? Hey, well, wait. Let me why, hear. why he had to put the fist up like that? Oh, wait. Why he put the fist up like that? <laughs> He wants the black vote too. Come on, <laughs> he, he got him. Dog, to have the composure to get shot, mm. his shoes came off. He was like, first of all, I ain't getting, no, I ain't going nowhere without these Trumps on. You know, you got. Wait, his Trump. shoes came off. Yeah, his shoes came off. There's an audio, real close, great video. Um, you can check my channel out. I found it somewhere. Yeah, it's audio and it's close. So he wouldn't get up until he got his shoes on. I don't no. know if he had on Jays or he had on them Trumps, but he was like, <laughs> I ain't getting up without my shoes. They tackled him so hard, they knocked the shoes off. Then they wanted to move quick. Yeah. Secret Service kind of, uh, right. we're going to have to give them a salary increase or something because yeah. we need better people in there. Right. Get rid of this, some of these, these cats in there. They wanted to move quick. And then you can hear somebody saying, okay, okay, sniper, sniper got him, suspect down. Yeah. So they were going to move without knowing if the shooter was alive or dead or oh, still don't have the beat on them. Wow. That's bad. Yeah. And then they finally figured it out. They stayed for a second. They got them out of there and everything was good from that point on. But the scariest part about it all, you got to hear this audio mm. to let those people who, like, whoever said it was fake, just listen to it. You hear, like, back, back, back. Like, it's an AR-15. Like, he come back, back, back. And then Trump, like, on the second one, do this. Then it's a pause for, like, yeah. a second or two. Uh -huh. Then you hear, do, 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 do. That's some snipers getting back at him. Kill the him. snipers getting back at who? The, the shooter. Oh. So he shoots three times, I think, and the one, the second one hits Trump ear. Right. Then it's a pause, like, oh, where he at? Uh. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. That ain't the craziest part. And that's crazy. The craziest part is about 10 seconds later, you hear a lady just scream, like, you know, a scream. Yeah. Which is her seeing the her, person who had got her husband. blown off. Was it her husband? Could have been her. I didn't know exactly, but it could have been her. It made sense. It would make sense if it was her. And then I know everyone's not privy to that video or that audio at that time, but that's the point. Right. You don't want to wait to see what the elements are, what the details are. Just right. pop off and say it's fake. That's wild. And then uh, I saw a video that they saw the shooter on the roof 10 minutes before and they were pointing it out. What do you think that was about? What you, like, how do you see that? That's, that's where things kind of get kind of iffy to me. You see a guy on the roof and you're not, and if the snipers are there and they're able to kill him so fast, why why didn't they if they that, that means they're zoomed in they they didn't see him yeah fake is different than inside job which it could be he had some help 
Because if people are telling everyone someone's on the roof mm -hmm. within scope of the president, mm -hmm. that person's gone, right? Mm -hmm. you, you can't sneak into to a damn concert, let alone you now going to be able to have a bead on the president and yeah. they're not tripping? That's interesting. Yeah. And what's interesting also is, like I said, back, 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 president hit. Boom, 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 boom. Right. I mean, this is a big old field. Right. You found them like that? It, I mean, did you already kind of know? Right. Mm. Yeah. Were you already in on it? So maybe the people who are saying fake is trying to say that, mm -hmm. but that's not the same as he got shot, someone else got killed, and it could have been this guy trying to do something with some support, some inside help. Right. So you, oh, so you think it was an inside job? Eh. If you you can button that one up way better than it was just fake, like right, he right, staged right. it. Yeah. Oh, somebody don't like him on the inside, and it was like had enough power pool platform to be like, let's ignore that guy that's. 400 feet away. <laughs> what? With a bead on the president, like yeah. climbing on the roof and laying down, prone position. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. That is kind of wild. That is wild, right? Like, yeah, because everybody else was just standing there looking on the fence, just being normal. Yeah, so that's it. That was a that was an interesting situation. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. 2024, we going through this. I know. Like, it's bad. 2024, man. What 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 where you see yourself in the next five years? What you trying to do? You know, I've never been that guy, and so far, that's been a successful approach for me. My dad one day told me when I was overwhelmed, I'm like 13 years old playing mm -hmm. football, and I just couldn't go outside and hang and kick it and chase the girls. Yeah, I was yeah. mad. Everybody was on their Nintendos, and I'm getting dressed to go to practice. Double right, days. Right. I'm mad. <laughs> but we had, we balling. I'm balling. We ain't lost a game. It's like everything going well, but it's just like, Daddy, let me live. And my dad was like, okay, how long is a marathon? I was like, daddy, I'm, I play football. He's like, how long is a marathon? I said, 26.2 miles. He said, right. He said, now if you take one step, how long is that marathon? I said, 26.1, he said, exactly. <laughs> he said, just take a step. Like, yeah. just, just go to practice today. And I learned that you get overwhelmed when you start adding up what you have to do instead of remembering why you're doing it. Yeah, baby so, steps. Yeah, so my dad reminded me why I was doing it. Mm. And I was doing it because I loved it. I was doing it because it was good to me. I was good to it. And it was giving me a different confidence that I couldn't get anywhere else. And I had brothers, you know, so I never forget my why. Yeah. Even though I add up my what's, but then it all goes away when I just remember that why. Mm. And then how, how important do you think it is? Because you're married now. How long have you been married? 10 years? Yeah, 10 years, decade. So you think a, um, a woman is the most important thing in a man's life? Nah. Damn. Uh, Sorry, it, ladies. <laughs> no, picking. I think picking the right woman is uh, important because if you pick the wrong woman, I've done that, mm. um, it, can, it can dim your light, I realized. Because... I hear you. I'm listening. Because... No. Say like you really ambitious and and then you fall in love with someone, right? Yeah. yeah. This person you fall in love with uh, requires this amount of attention, right? Say yeah. you're trying to build this empire, but this she's trying to get this attention. Right. Now your love is going to take you to the attention rather than building the empire. That means you pick the wrong person. If you pick the right person, she knows that you're trying to build the empire, and she and you know she'll try and compromise with the yeah. needs and the wants because of course like you need to give your wife attention but right. if you got that's why I say picking the right person is very important. Okay, let's reconcile that with you. Use your words against yours. Yeah, it seemed like you were a guy who doesn't have regrets. Yeah. Okay, so if you have no regrets, how do you pick wrong? Because what's to say what right is? Because that's just the path you are on. No, because I feel like you have to pick wrong to realize, mm -hmm. right? In the dating, in the dating in phase. The dating. So you do that in the dating phase. You realize, oh wow, this is if I pick the wrong woman, yeah. this can uh, affect me in the future when I get married, right. right? So if I were to if I were to have uh, regrets, then I wouldn't have. I, I, that, I, every lesson that I have, good or bad. I take it to uh, to help future me. Mm. So now I know that I know that okay, if I pick a wife when I get married, have kids, they have to support. Uh, we have to have a mutual understanding of where we where we want to be in the future. Yeah. And if it clashes heads, then I, it just won't work. You know, some people can do the uh, you know go this way and be the be the the uh, what's it, the husband house husband <laughs> yeah, yeah. be house yeah, husband yeah I'm kind of that right now too it's so yeah. funny let me say this your initial question was mm -hmm. 
uh, picking a woman, um, picking the wrong woman. And what's the most important thing? It's really you. And this is so selfish, but people got to understand what's in common between being selfish and selfless. Mm -hmm. Self. Um, that's why God made you in his image. And he lives in you because it's really about yourself. This world will socialize you to make you think you have to do all these things to be valuable. Mm -hmm. No one gives you props for just living, breathing, surviving. They only give it to you when you're thriving, right? So you got to have accolade to be valuable, right? right? Before, oh, wait, I'm nine years old and just trying to figure out life. I'm not valuable. And that's why a lot of times you see youngsters lose their way. You see a lot of crime in these bad neighborhoods because they're not told they're valuable just by breathing. And you actually are. So when you get into the point where it's time to date, you got to understand dating is nothing but data entry. Mm. So it's like a big safe with 20 digits on it. Good luck trying to crack that code on the first try, right? Right, yeah. It's going to take try, 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 try. So that's the failure, but failing to success to finally finding the right one. But here's the problem. That's why the divorce rate is so high right now. People always put it on who they met, who they're with, mm -hmm. who their spouse is, and what they're up to. Mm -hmm. And they lose sight of who they are. Yeah. Because what we really are is just a design of three relationships. Mm. Your mama... Your daddy, whether he was there or not, mama there or not, and you, mm. your childhood. That's all, every relationship you go ever look at, if you say, all right, let me break down their mama, let me break down their daddy, that situation relationship, and me break down their childhood. That's all we are, manifest of that. Mm. And so I realized that through therapy, through conversations, like, oh. So when I have a problem with my wife, I go to myself first. Mm. Most relationships, you got a problem with her, you checking her. Right. And that's why the relationship spirals out of control. Because mm. she ain't truly the problem. She's the magnet to what you are. Damn, that's why I'm single. <laughs> See, I don't regret it. Because if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have found out the answers. Yeah. So, so, so I, I got hip to that in so many different ways. But one time, like my first, my first level of dating was I was the self-sabotager. Mm. Like I really didn't want to be married. But I wanted to be with a woman. I wanted companionship. She was fine. She was nice. She was smart. I wanted all that. But right. I also wanted to see if there were more than just her. Right. Like, and I knew it. I'm 23, 24. And I yeah. just couldn't say it. I couldn't even understand it. But I was doing it. And yeah. One woman I was dating checked me. She was like, you just don't want this to work. So go ahead. <laughs> Keep arguing with me. You fighting yourself. Right. And she set, sent me on the course. We weren't even together after that. She sent me on the course of like, yo, I'm going to go through life blaming these women when really it's me. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gravitating towards her or she is magnetic to me because of my issues as I'm her issues. Mm -hmm. So that's where it all comes from. Relationships, once you find somebody, you're compatible with them, it can work if you stop looking at them to make it work. Yeah. And stop looking at them when it's not working. Yeah. And we all got that rigged into us until we condition it out yeah. of us. Damn, you just dropped the mic on that. <laughs> Let me call my ex back. Hello? <laughs> uh, hey, what's, King. What's the... Hey. Nah, you're going to be like, what you want? <laughs> what's the purpose of this call? <laughs> what you want for my homie? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like, uh, what is... What's, what's been your longest relationship? Um. Yeah, my wife. Yeah, by far. Um, ten plus before her. Before you were married, you guys were dating for ten years. Oh no, no, no. We were together like almost two years. We got married quick because I knew. Because I, I mean, I'm 39 at the time, so I'm like, mm. stop playing. Like yeah. I know what I know, and I know what I don't know, and I know what I want. So yeah. she was all of that. Um, before her, three years maybe. Okay. <clears throat> three years. Dating was fun to me though. Like I love being out in the streets. Like yeah. I love it was like a big social experiment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, I used to look like this and nobody really tripped. And mm -hmm. now I look almost the same, but everybody know I'm coming different. I you got, got some. money yeah, now. <laughs> I got five dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I, I was in awe of what I was able to do. Yeah. Like I was like, I'm going out, and as soon as you go out, you're like, look how fun. Wait a minute, she's talking to me first. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like hey, how you do? Okay, yeah. you don't remember me? Stop playing. Bro, I hate when they be doing that. You don't remember me. No, look how I'm looking at you. <laughs> I don't remember you. 
<laughs> bro, I be get hit with that all the time. When I was when I was younger, when I was new to the fame, I um, yeah, you know, yeah, dating dating was fun. It was it was you know going meeting people, having you know just I would just go out and have fun. Yeah, like that was the that was the vibe. That was, it. I was able to. I remember um, new you know before I before I had my fame. Uh, I went to to uh, this club. It was New Year's Eve, and it was like twenty minutes until like the countdown. You did the whole champagne drink tickets. Yeah, that was chicken my dinner. That was my idea. I, I went to the club. Yep, I was like, Ooh, I'm about to get in there. I'm about to go pop these <laughs> bottles, lick on a titty or two. Uh uh-uh. uh hell no. They wouldn't let me in the club. Really? Because I wasn't nobody then. Oh, I feel you. So then from that day, I, I walked. So I spent New Year's uh, walking back to my apartment. <laughs> And then looking at the fireworks, just hitting the sky. And I was like, ah, damn, I'm never going to a club again mm. until they let me in or they pay me to go there. Mm. And that's when I sat down and I grinded it out. And that's when I took everything I was doing serious. And that's what formed King Batch, to I, who I am today. Wow. So that's why there's no regrets. I'm glad that that, that club experience happened because now that that changed. I put the beast in me. Yeah. Um, and then now it's like everywhere I go, okay, King Batch, come on, come on. In. Yeah. It, it makes you measure what real value is in this world because to not have it, like me growing up, and a lot of people, it's so... Oh, I could go so many ways with this. I hate when people come up to me now and be like, oh, man, you don't know how it is. And I'm like, dog, Mm -hmm. do I? I just am not in that same space. But trust me, I have not forgotten. And then you get it. And then you, like, enjoy it. And then you get full. You're like, all right, I can't. uh, Tacos is my favorite food. Can't eat them every day, though. You know what I mean? Like, same old stuff. Can't just keep going to the club. Can't keep hearing the same stuff. Can't keep seeing the same girl. Can't hear the same line. Like, it's just like, I need another level of elevation. Right. And now I think the true, like, the true value in this world is having it all and not. Using it all, right? Like you yeah. know, like the 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 discipline and refrain to have the access. True power is knowing I have discretion. Right. Like I can tear you up, I could destroy you, but I choose not to. Right. right. I use I I engage with people trying to outthink situations instead of trying to fight through situations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I've learned that fame taught me that. Like, wait a minute, because at first you're thinking like, oh man, I'm popping, and you're like, I'm the man. Right. And then you realize you see a homie fall off or two, or you see somebody pass you up or mm-hmm. two, and you're like, this is too fluid to be real. This mm-hmm. can't be it. And I think that's what the phases are. You're going to go through that phase where you're like, I need something realer than this, something of substance, because everything else is just so, so fluid. Right. It happens so fast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's. I think life is about ups and downs <clears throat> also. It's like the lessons that we learn, and there's lessons that, you know, we don't learn from like some people. That part. Some people. It, I, I can't remember the story exactly, but there was a there was a person on the roof, right? And there was a flood, and they were just sitting on the roof. And then someone on a canoe came by and said, "Yo, hop on the canoe." It's like, "Oh no, nah, you know, like some some God God got someone coming for me." Oh yeah. Like, All right, cool, go. And then another canoe came by. It's like, "Oh no, no, God, he's got a boat coming. For, got a big boat coming for me." Boom. <laughs> and another one, and then no, no, God, he's got a really big ship coming for me. Gone by, right? Yeah. That person drowned and died. And then it was like, God, what happened? I was waiting for the boat. You never saved me. He's like, yo, I sent you three people. <laughs> and you just let them go by. So it's like, yep. yeah, I think everything happens for a reason. There's, like we said before, it's like, yeah, there's, it's what, 20, 26 miles in a marathon or whatever? Yeah. It's like you got to sometimes look at the small things. It's like, you know. That's funny you say that because I think, well, like all my homegirls, and a lot of them are, were single or got married and now divorced. Like, I'm at that age. I'm 49. So yeah. if I see my crowd out, yeah, 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 you don't took an L or two. <laughs> <laughs> like, How many kids? Three kids? Oh, divorce? It's all right. You know, I get yeah. it. Like, yeah. normally. And I used to always say it. I was like, don't miss the boat waiting on a yacht. Right. And that's the way I always conceptualize it. And that's in anything. Like, if, like me in Compton and me in South Central and me trying to make it to the league, the next step is not the league. Right. Like football teaches you that. You don't get on the field and see the end zone and say that's next. Mm-hmm. What's next is the first down to keep the opportunities going so you can get to the end zone. Right. And they rigged it that way on purpose. It's a life lesson. Like, dog, just get a first down. Yeah. And that will reset how many times and opportunities you get. Mm-hmm. Go to that event and actually reach out, show your personality, meet people. 
instead of, okay, you know what? Oh, ain't nobody going to be there. And there's you no know many times that's happened to me where I'm just like going. I'm like, I ain't tripping. And I'm like, damn, look who I met there, whether it was her back then or there's somebody right now who can help what I'm doing in enterprise be even greater. Mm -hmm. And it's just that random. So when you go to the club, everybody like, ain't nobody, you ain't gonna meet nobody in the club. I met my wife in the club. Mm -hmm. You ain't gonna meet nobody in the club. Your ass in the club. Mm -hmm. If you good, somebody else in there good too. Right, yeah. But we don't exchange it like that. Mm -hmm. We stay behind the paywall. And a lot of times fame is the only thing that really breaks that paywall. Yeah. I mean, if you could take it away, would you be unfamous? No. Because <laughs> I know how to handle that shit. Right. First of all, I ain't got no, none, none of the entourage. I don't do that. Yeah. Um, I'm not big headed. I'm my own security. I got a chicken wing on me ready for you in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> you can step on my shoes. I ain't tripping on that. But yeah. if you, you know, do too much, I, I. yeah. Um, it, it, it's an access. It's just like anything. It's, it's an access. Something you worked hard for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I worked for the whatever came from what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a school teacher or I wanted to be a football player. Now, obviously, being a school teacher, you're not going to be famous. Mm -hmm. And I was okay with that. Then I kept getting bigger, faster, stronger, loving football, and it worked. I took the helicopter instead of that long plane ride that I was trying to take as a teacher. Yeah. And I was going to take it. But um, fame is amazing. Like, I wouldn't seek fame, mm -hmm. but it's amazing because... Yeah. You, the toughest thing for people in this world I see right now is to be heard and seen. Right. That's why everybody got 98 tattoos and mm -hmm. the hair color is every color of the peacock. Right. And everybody louder and everybody wearing the freshest stuff and buying this so it can talk for them. Right. It could be their entry point to a conversation. Mm -hmm. We're all looking for those icebreakers and fame is the ultimate icebreaker. Mm -hmm. Like everywhere I go, you know, Get pulled over by the police. Roll down the window. You're like, hey, hey. hey. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> I thought cops were bad. I thought they were going to kill black people. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. it just, fame is a different animal, man. So I, I don't look at it as a negative. God wouldn't have created it if it was all bad. Right. It's just you got to know how to manage it. You got to know how to manage it. My 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 thing was, um, I never, I was never seeking out to for fame. Um, I always wanted to be, um, an actor. That was like my number one thing. I always knew like, yes, I want to be an actor mm -hmm. since I was like a teenager, since I was like 12, 13 years old. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know how I was going to get there, but I've, right. I've been trying since I was mm -hmm. that age. Mm -hmm. And that's how hard it is that you have to work to get in because I had no connections. I had no pull. Where are you uh, from? Uh, Canada. Born in Canada. My wife from Canada. What really? part? Toronto. That's the best city outside of LA. In the they got the, be the most oh. beautiful women. Oh, I lived in Buffalo, so you know I was oh, over there. Oh, you was right there, oh, just yeah. hopping across the border. <laughs> hopscotch. Oh, the, I got the best Toronto story. Oh, I love me some Toronto. Good. Young oh. Street, Bloor Street, oh, man. Brass Rail. Come on, stop playing with your boy. Oh, man, yeah. I, yeah. I made a, I'm, I've, I've, uh, <laughs> My kids are laid all over Toronto. <laughs> None of them have uh, come to life, but they just they just in the early stages on somebody's <laughs> blanket. <laughs> Just, it's cold out here, Daddy. Yeah, just in Toronto. <laughs> Help me, Daddy. At the uh, where was, me. <laughs> I can't remember the the hotel, the Shangri La Hotel. That's, oh, that's where all my kids are laid out. <laughs> so uh, the, the cleaning service. Uh, make sure you you wash them. Oh good. man, them hybrids <laughs> out there. I, I've never heard mixes and seen mixes of women that I did. Uh, that Jamaican Chinese. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like Nigerian East. Oh, mm. African. I was like, what is going on here? Yeah, because everybody moves there. Everybody moves yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know, dog. My best story ever from club life, and it's only because this is the only time it ever happened, that a woman bought a table for me. Mm. It happened in Toronto. Really? And this is So I'm old. This is like 99. So there's not cell phones, certainly not camera phones, none of that. We ain't doing none of that. We ain't no yeah, cash yeah. app, nothing. Uh -huh. So we walk in. Me and my teammates, and we walk into some club where you go straight downstairs, and there's some beads, and then it's like really chic, like dope. Yeah. And we walk in, and this six foot beautiful lady just go like, Damn. I mean, it's out of a movie. Story. I love a tall girl. <laughs> She's taller than you, huh? Huh? She got you, huh? So I'm she... I'm six. I'm six two. <laughs> I know your height keep going up based on the story. <laughs> and she, I'm not lying, dog. Now this is me, young muscles. I ain't famous, but you know. Two people recognized me. Yeah. She, whatever it was, she was like, and I was she like, did this? Dog, this ain't no lie. And I'm like, what? And I walk over there and she's like, wow, 
how are you? And she introduced her name. I forgot her name. And she was like, oh, you guys coming to hang? And I was like, yeah, I'm with my teammates, all them. She's like, come on. And then so we sit down. I'm like, Ran all the train? Of us- <laughs> that's what it sounds. That's what the story sounds like it's going. <laughs> so stupid. She said, come on, I'm with my teammates. Oh, bring them on. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, like, I, bring them all. <laughs> oh, man, you, you should have been there. Then you, you I ain't yeah, I would have been, but I would have been first though. Okay, I don't go second. I go first. I go first, and then I'm done. You know what? She got me with the shock and awe. The fact that she wanted me to come over. The fact that she was like, bring all your teammates, sit down, buying the drinks the whole time, and I'm like, wow. So then I'm, I'm like caught off. She that fine, that cool. And and buying all our stuff, we like we used to doing that. Yeah. And then she's like, "So what are you guys doing next?" And I was like, "I guess get something to eat. I don't know." She's like, "Come with us." And we go to some big Chinese restaurant, probably not even Chinese. It just had a big old table that you spin and you spin the table, and we all sitting there. We like 15, 20 deep, and she thought all that. And so after that, I get her number. I'm a, I like I'm gonna marry this girl. So I'm like, now I'm in that. I ain't gonna mess with her the first night, so I can know she good, even though she probably messed with somebody else the first night. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, all right, I got her number. <laughs> you don't even put her in the phone. You got her number. <laughs> Man, like, I was so much in them streets. I get back to the crib in Buffalo about a couple of days later, like, call that girl. And I look, and the number was like on paper with a pen, but it had bled the numbers because it was in my pocket because uh. I was I was partying. Ah. You never saw her again. No. And the dude told me, somebody told me she was a singer, international singer, that it was in Europe. Maybe you could find her now. Hey, what's up? <laughs> hit, hit, hit King up. Yeah. And then King will let me know what you're talking about because I'm married. <laughs> On camera, you know, we got to play it out. Yeah. <laughs> now, nah, some international singer took care of it. That was my only T-Dot story. The rest is just ratchet. The rest is just crazy. Damn. I mean that's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, that's, yeah, y'all y'all good people up there. Yeah, my wife Canadian. She from Vancouver. Oh, Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. yeah beautiful city. Time. Yeah, it is very beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's like I feel like Toronto's like it's like a clean New York, and then Vancouver's just clean everything. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Good people. Good. Yeah. Good times. Beautiful scenery. Um, she's from a farm town outside of Vancouver, though. She's oh, okay. An hour and a half away, called Abbotsford. Like you can smell it when you come, like you pull in, oh shit. <laughs> it's like really? No, it's like that? Yeah. You got the manure in the air. And uh she from a small town. So she kept a lot of those small town values with yeah. your loves, you know? Oh, that's good, man. All right, well, we gotta wrap it up. Yeah. Um, anything that any advice you wanna give people if they trying to take over the world or what, what you what you learned in life? Man, that's love. How um, how old are you now? 49. Damn. <laughs> how old are you? It don't matter. Oh, really? No, 36. 36? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I tell you, like, seriously, for cats out there trying to do it, uh, track and field taught me this. Like, in track and field, you line up, and it's the most objective, pure sport. It's why it's the first sport. Like, ain't no about ain't about your coach, mm-hmm. ain't about your teammates, unless you're running a relay. It's you in lane one. Yeah. Don't get psyched out. Don't run the race for lane two. So a lot of times in this world, you're in lane one and you look at who else in the race and then you're checking out their spikes and you're checking out what their muscles look like or who they are and what they're up to. Or you're running the race and you're not running your best race in form and technique because you see this guy in front of you. Or maybe he's behind you. You think you got it. And I learned not to get psyched out. It's a big psychology play because life's a competition between you and yourself. Mm-hmm. People will be socialized. We were taught like, man, you got to go get it. And what you're going to go get is out there. But what you need to go get is all the tools you have in here Mm -hmm. and then put them on display. So for me, like Compton didn't intimidate me. I was never scared of gangsters. I knew they could take my life. Uh, I was smart about it. I never was like, what's up? But I knew that they were hurt. That's why they were hurting somebody else. Mm. I knew that they would swing first because somebody already swung on them. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm looking through that level, that dimension. And I want people to understand that whoever's in front of you or behind you, it ain't about none of that. It's about what you got inside you that you want to manifest. So mm. I was on a mission to make my dreams real, dog. And I was like, how can I do it? And you look around and you try to find answers. Mm. And that's why people lose their minds because... Even when they get there, even when they make it, they still looking around 
for that peace, for that calm. And it ain't there. Right. It's in there. Everything you need, everything you want out there is already in here. That's Damn. what I live by. That's bars right there. Yeah. Uh, what's so? What, what's where, where can people find you on social media? And tell uh, what you got coming up. You got your podcast. What you got? Yeah, man, we're doing the podcast. Um, we're building a coalition, the athlete coalition. That's in the works. So we're gonna uh, build up our own media network. Uh, I did media for twenty plus years. Loved it. No regrets in that. But it shifted on me, and I got mad at it. Mm. So instead of messing with their money, I decided to go make my own money and mm. do it my way, right? Instead of being the hater, they, oh, why we always talking about athletes? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are we always killing LeBron? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, all right, I'll be over here, and y'all do that. Right. And it's, it's changing over there as well, and I'm looking forward to the growth of what we have over here. But it's so, so many guys that want to do it the right way in terms of respecting the investment it takes to be a – be successful in anything, let alone uh, athletes. So yeah. we're trying to do it a different way, different version. Doing that, running the foundation, Project Transition. Uh, we educate and empower the underserved through exclusive experiences, man. So we take kids from the underserved communities and give them the glamorous life, like the five-star experience. Make sure that these kids understand that there are other ways to the top of that mountain. And it's not as far as you think. So we let them get around other success stories and they break down their journey so the kids can know more of a dimension than just what they're dealing with in their environment. So it's pretty dope, man. Raise my kids and that's life. Yeah, you know? that's dope. Oh, man. You got well, kids yet or are they all in the mattress still? I, I, no, they, they they not here yet, but I'm going I'm to have a, a couple of, by accident, I think. <laughs> I'm a, you I'm better a, have a kid, but get get married, dog. Don't do the dummy. I mean, look. I look. I'm, I'm a hypocrite too, because my first child is from out of wedlock. Really, and that's a regret. But not her. Really, but out of wedlock is a regret because really? he's just bringing pain into that baby's life. But what if you stay with the person? Oh, that's amazing. If you a nuclear but, family is but it. not, but not, uh, but not get married. Oh, okay. Uh, here come the remix. Um, you could do that. I'm not mad at that. My mom and did, dad did that. 21 years, boyfriend and girlfriend. Mm. Yeah, straight up. Um, it, to me, it looked the same. I, I didn't go to the ceremony because they didn't have one. You know what right, I mean? Right, so it didn't yeah. matter. Mm -hmm. um, but it's about that unity. Yeah. And the communities and the individuals, anyone who stays together uh, puts it, their, their legacy in better position. They put their kids in better position so they don't have to grow up with that hole in their heart. And every kid that has a displaced parent has a hole in their heart. Right, and right. And we're seeing the results of that. Yeah. We're seeing... A, a very pained society that's acting out because a lot of times they just didn't have somebody to talk to. Mm, yeah. That's deep. Yeah. All right. Well, um, this was dope. Hey, I'm I gotta I gotta shout my uh I'm, yeah. I'm on tour, okay? Mm. So these these are my city dates. Mm. Stand up tour. July 19th, Red Bank, New Jersey, July 20th, Annapolis, Maryland, July 26th, Atlanta, ATL, Georgia, August 3rd, Ridgefield, Connecticut, August 4th. Pennsylvania, August 23rd to the 24th, Naples, Florida, and December 21st, Squamish, Washington. Get your tickets at KingBatch.com. I heard Atlanta, and then it was a week later. What? How long you got to stay in Atlanta? Everything else was like the next day, next day. Oh, the At Atlanta's the 26th. July, July 26th to the, to the 27th. And then you just chilling out in Atlanta, I'm ain't you? just chilling. <laughs> Cause Atlanta, hey, that Connecticut was the third and the Pennsylvania the fourth. <laughs> yeah, but Atlanta got some things that I need to uh, reconcile and reconsider and reevaluate. Atlanta's a lot. And relive. Uh, Atlanta's a lot, man. Respect for you, yeah. man. Proud of everything you're doing. Thank you, man. Keep going and keep shining, man. Appreciate it. My you. dog. Uh, All right. Oh, we out. Peace.